Today I'm going to show you how to do an outside in dive. Let's go. Hey guys, today we're going to do a die video, uh, kind of a tutorial, and it's sort of a risk because what I'm going to be teaching you how to do, I don't really know how to do. I did it once last week or the week before, and it came out okay. Uh, I'm hoping I can improve upon it, but thinking about it right now, it's like I don't actually know what I'll do differently, so who knows. So you may have seen my inside out die on this Nike Lakota. It's got this cool green on the outside, white on the inside. It's, it's seen a lot of use since then, uh, but it's still nice looking. So last week or the week before I did this on a Maverick Optic, which is basically the opposite. So the outside is white and the inside is dyed. This is an advanced dye. This is a advanced dye. Not really, anyone can do it. Uh, and so I'm gonna show you how I did it. It might not be the right way, it might not be the best way, but I've only done one and it came out pretty nicely. It's um. It's pretty clean. There's some bleed where in here. It's a little sloppy. Like I said, I'm not sure how I'm going to improve upon this. Um, but maybe I'll just get lucky. Initially, I was going to do it on this brine clutch too, but I don't like the kind of head that has like this is sort of a different piece than this. I don't know if you can see the the line right here. You know, that's definitely going to draw dye in and and bleed it out somewhere else. So so I think instead I will do, do this Adidas Boss. So outside in die on an Adidas Boss. Let me show you what you'll need. So I was in the hardware store looking for something completely unrelated to dying heads and I saw this. This is Rust-Oleum Leak Seal Flexible Rubber Coating. This I liked that it was flexible. Reading right here it says seals leaks and cracks instantly watertight. Watertight is huge when you're dying. The, the best way to think about this die uh, for the first step at least, is that you want to mask off with this paper masking tape. You want to mask off where you eventually want to dye. So I want um, I want the inside to eventually be a different color. So what I need to do is start by masking it off. That may seem counterintuitive, but what we do is we mask off the whole inside with this stuff, and then we spray the whole outside with this stuff. Then we remove our masking, our tape, and we're left with this all over the outside. Now we can dip it in dye, whatever color we like, and hopefully everything works out perfectly. Let's give it a go. All right, so it's it's fully coated, and it's pretty gross looking, as you can see. You know, I'm not I'm not totally sure if this technique is is viable, like if it's the best way to do it. Um, one thing that is a bit of a problem is when I start pulling this off, the tape that you can't even really see anymore, uh, this blue part, that it kind of peels off the corners of the rubber. You know, it's sort of because it's stuck to each other. So anyway, let's let's see what we got under here. Let's see how, how clean it peels. You see right there, it, it's totally stuck. See, the beauty of this is that once I post this, someone else will see it and be like, oh, I know exactly what he could do to make that better. And that's kind of the way it works in the world. Someone has an idea or comes up with a technique and people improve upon it and that's awesome. That's the way it should be. And you know since there's so much sharing of ideas and techniques in the lacrosse customization community that I think it's cool. You know, we're, we're all kind of working toward the same, oh yeah that's going to be sloppy right there. We're all working toward the same goal and that's cool gear. So this is really sloppy, this edge here. See all that, 
all the crap going in. So this is gonna this is gonna take some finesse. I'll keep recording. Um, probably speed it up. But I'm gonna have to figure out some some way to get this nice and clean. All right, so I grabbed this piece of really fine uh, sandpaper. I don't know what grid it is, but it's you know it's a what well, high grid. So I'm thinking, if I go around the edge, fold it up like so, and just kind of go like this, I can maybe break through the rubber and get a, a relatively clean edge. And I always start on the back of the head because here, you know, I'm kind of testing how I'm gonna get an edge. If my edges aren't clean back here, no big deal, because this is where mesh will go and you won't be able to, you know, knots, you won't be able to see this edge anyway. But that kind of looks like it might work. It's not perfect. And what I don't know is if, oh, you know what, that is going to work. All right, let's do this. See that? How it just takes off the rubber and, and my tape is, is below this point. Obviously, I'm not sanding through the tape. But I'm sanding through the rubber that's connecting the tape to the rubber, basically. Just removing that connection. And then it'll be much easier to, to peel off the tape because it's only connected to the head. That's that's good. That's a good technique right there. Look at that. We're learning together. And on this, this it's, it's not even, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's sanding the head a little bit, but it's such a fine grit that it's not doing much. But I'm staying. To the inside uh, because I don't want a rough edge out on the rubber. You know, I'd, I'd rather have it in here, um, you know, so it's rough on the tape. See right there you can kind of see tape and it's a little rough but out here it's pretty smooth. Yeah this might work guys. All right so as a proof of concept I'd say that's the way to do it. Okay so that's the outside that I'm a little less concerned with. I also spent less time masking on the outside, on the back. A little more time making it, it uh, making sure it was flush on this side. So maybe the sanding process will go better over here. Okay, so on to the front. So I'm gonna have to clean up this edge, maybe with uh, maybe with electrical tape. I'm not sure how the tape will adhere to the the rubber. Also, if I put it on wrong and need to move it, it will pull the rubber up. So, uh, maybe not the perfect method right here, but is there such thing in dyeing as the perfect method? I think not. Okay, so it looks like I've got a nice white edge around the front, a nice white edge around the back, and I think we can take out our tape now safely. Oh, you know what? There's still the, the um, windows between the struts that will tear. So this is where we may need our exacto. It would be better to mask this off, like I did the inside-out die, where you, you mask off and then you cut out. So I'll do. I would do that in the future rather than this technique. But no turning back now, right? All right. So all the tape and rubber is off, and it's definitely not perfect. Um, you know, you can see the rough edges. It's nice. Well, it's pretty rough there. Uh, you can see where it goes a little too far. So I'm gonna have to fix these, some of these rough edges with um, with electrical tape, um, maybe hot glue in some of these windows, in these openings. You can see that there was a couple that, like here, a big chunk of rubber tore off. You know, overall, they're they're super rough at the edges on, on some of them. Like right there's nice, but what I'm going to do now is go around the whole, all the edges, windows, front, back, and just remove some of the extra rubber that that's rough. Uh, make them as clean as I can with that, and then I'll figure out where I need to add some uh, electrical tape. So let's go. Okay, so I added electrical tape around some of the edges. Um, some of them aren't. I kind of cut this corner a little bit, so that's stupid, but I'm afraid to pull it off 
because it may pull the rubber off. Um, what I did here, because the, the windows between the struts were tough to, like as I peeled off the, uh, the masking tape from inside, it peeled off the rubber. So what I did is I added masking tape just over the holes and then went on this side and added hot glue in each of the holes between the struts. Now I am going to pull this off and hopefully everything's cool underneath. And I don't see why it wouldn't. I did the um, I did the scoop holes, but I didn't do sidewalls. You know, I'm not too worried if, if some are died and some aren't, or half of half of a hole is died and half of it isn't. The strings go through there anyway, so it's not the end of the world. The uh, the top string holes are a little more visible. So I wanted to, to do this trick to those two. Oh, I taped off the bottom string holes, but I forgot to add hot glue, so I'm not doing those. And here's a spot where the tape isn't sticking. I mean, this this whole die could end up being terrible. And then what I'll have to do is spend an hour getting all this stuff off, all the rubber off, all the hot glue and everything, just to, to make it a one color die. <laughs> So this could be a lot of effort for uh, very mediocre results, but that's all right. One thing I'll do before I throw it in the die is go over it with a heat gun, just to see if I can get some of this electrical tape to sit better. Uh, all right, I think we're ready to dye it. See what happens. Okay, so it's out of the die, out of the freezer. Now comes the hard part. Maybe not the hard part, but another hard part. And that is cleaning it off. All right guys, so it's all done. I got all the rubber and masking and everything off and uh, it's pretty clean. As you can see, that's a pretty nice edge all the way around. There's a little bit of bleed in, like down here, um, in between the struts, not bad. In some places, and I, you probably won't show up on the camera, in some places there's little, uh, little dots of dye where in the spray there must have been little pinhole, uh, little pinholes, and the dye leaked through. Luckily it didn't bleed. They're not even really noticeable, and once the head is strong and, and starts to be used, uh, it won't show up. Getting the rubber off was a huge pain. We, um, I, I started it last week, and then this weekend we went to Tahoe for a tournament, and so I was able to walk away from it. Otherwise, I probably would have freaked out because it was taking a long time, especially in here, um, the Adidas logo and stuff. You know, there's a lot of small little details in here, and that was difficult. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that I was going to do it on a Adidas Boss head. Well, about 25 minutes ago when I was wrapping this up, I was using a little tool to pull out the rubber out of here, and I noticed, wait a minute, that says demonic. So I guess when I started, I grabbed the wrong head. This is definitely a tricky die. This is probably, you know, for a basic, just color die, no logos, no no decals or anything, It's it's one of the most difficult that I've done. Um, the next step for this to make it one level cooler would be to dye it in a, in a lighter color. So the white would say, you know, be yellow, um, or pink or something just to, just to have that two color dye. Um, I think it'd be pretty impressive. In my opinion, the outside in dye, this dye is more difficult than a, a lot more difficult than the out, inside out dye. But it's not as cool. You know, it looks cool, the two different colors, you know, the, the white outside and the dark inside. But on the inside out die, I think it's just a little more impressive looking and easier. But anyway, I'd love to see if you guys do this. Um, you know, I'd love to see what, how you did it differently, you know, how you changed up the process to make it better. Uh, if you took it the extra step and did an extra color on the outside or added logos in here, I mean, there's a lot you could do to ramp it up um, and truthfully it would be easy the hard part is is masking and getting a clean die you know adding a logo there at the beginning 
or you know doing that next color that's easy but it will make it look that much better so anyway guys hope you liked the video if you try it definitely post it up to instagram and tag me i'd love to see it and uh thanks for watching